Okay, who are you and where are you from? Hey, my name is David Orduba. I am from uh, Los Angeles, California. And uh, where uh, have you been work? Did you? How long have you been working here? In this, uh, uh, farmers market. Oh, I've been at this far farmers market for maybe over three, four, about four years now. And uh, how was this pandemic year for you? Uh, this pandemic year was interesting. Um, it was definitely an, an adjustment, um, but it also was a blessing as well. Um, it gave you know one time to kind of put things in perspective, figure out you know life and, and what I'm what I'm doing and stuff like that, and was you know and uh, it made me realize that with you know tea my brother and I have a tea business called Nia which stands for not your average tea and you know we've been able to kind of give a lot of people solace you know especially during a time of confusion and health worries and and you know a lot of unknowns tea was one of those daily rituals of comfort that you know we've discovered from our clients gave people a sense of calm you know so that, that was really rewarding um, and uh, what was your, was your question again? Well, um, let me ask, uh, have you been uh, in your private life? Have you been masking and uh, yeah, yeah, distancing? Yeah. Well, yeah, masking and distancing and, you know, I mean, being at work with my hands a lot, I was early on really cautious and stuff like that just because, you know, with the food product and, and something that's hand blended, you know, uh, I was really hyperactive and being tested and masked, keeping my distancing, stuff like that. And um, so... What it really made me kind of do is really tap into new forms of communication as far as like a lot of these chat apps and, and clubhouse and ways to kind of create social, to fill a social void without having to be um, in compromised situations. So it's kind of interesting that COVID really forced a lot of people to like create their new normal and the new future in a sense, you know, and even as things open up, we're in a place of like of things will be different. I mean, this was a, a paradigm shift. So, I'm, yes, I'm wearing my mask and all that. Um, and it's. Have, are you vaccinated? Uh, I am actually. I am. Uh, I, I I am. I've. I've. Were you worried about that? Uh, not really. I mean, I probably should be. I mean, normally I'm one to question stuff, and but I realized that I'd rather be. I'd rather be free. I'd, I'd rather be free within the trap rather than trapped within my freedom you know and that's one of those things where i, I, I want to travel I like to travel I like to do things move around and you know i want to be able to like not be in a compromised situation where i'm where my hand is forced so i rather was like you know what i'm gonna take it let me take it now and, and build my resistance and and just have faith you know so did you ask family and friends beforehand or uh, uh, did, uh or no did no you my, rely my, on the news and on, on expert no, just, opinions just, just trust i mean my uh, my uh, parents my dad works in medicine so they were vaccinated earlier and then um you know for them for me family's important so for them it was a sense of calm um whether i um you know i mean even though i even though i took the vaccine and i have no worries about it i actually feel like eh, i uh still I understand people who have apprehensions and, and are, are, are don't want to take it. I, I get it. Trust me, it's a very it's a very personal thing. Um, I just, um, as a, a spirit, a person driven by spirit, as a Christian, I feel like I have angels protecting me, and that whatever the outcome situation happens, happens. And you know, um, I uh, right now I'm using faith um, to to kind of protect me. You know, and I know that might. You, you, made, have a, but you have a, you have you're masking, you're distancing, and you're vaccinated, and you have faith. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and I and I live life. You know, what I mean, so I think it's a balance. I mean, because at the end of the day, there's always a risk too. There's a risk in not taking, and there's a risk taking. It. So uh, for me, I just weighed it out. Like, hey, um, am I at least doing my part, um, and am I still able to, to participate in life? And I, I, for me, it was worth taking it. So. And uh, so, what what do you see? Has the government been uh, uh, reacting uh, properly? Do you think over the top, about right, or where do you think? The, how do you think the response has been? No, it depends on, on which government you're speaking of. Our, I mean, like, which jurisdiction? But I think I think California was proactive. Or they're they're really extra, but it was I think necessary, and it's better safe than sorry. Um, and then a lot of a lot of COVID, a lot of it's, it's optics too. A lot of it's like 
create the theatrics of, of preventing everything, but the reality is it's better safe than sorry because you're seeing what's happening in India right now or other countries where, you know, this, this disease can just pop up in random ways. And so you want to be a little more hypervigilant. I know there's, there's, there's controversy about civil liberties and, and rightfully so and about right to do stuff, but I think it's also a right for right to be healthy. And I think that what COVID's kind of forced the society to do is to address things that have been swept in the rug from social issues to uh, health care to um, you name it. Like, I mean, because to u universal basic income, people didn't have checks for months, whatever. So the, the stimulus kind of came out. And what I've discovered is a lot of people who, in a city like LA, that are freelancers, it gave them time to kind of figure out new initiatives, new endeavors, start a new business, and stuff like that. So when people have a, a, a little bit of bread, it, it, a lot of times it, it allows them to do the things they've been putting off. And so I think UBI is one thing that totally could work. Healthcare, I mean, obviously you have a, 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 a vaccine, how are you gonna deploy it? How are you gonna make sure people get it who don't have insurance? And so it really forced society to kind of like, like figure out a real solution and so hey, it could actually work. Um, I mean, I can go down the list of, of uh, so I think, I think there were some goods and I think there were some things that probably could be better. And the, uh, you know, I think this time it also shows that even within the government, there's a lot of division and separation. And you said that uh, you've been socially distancing and you've kind of been taking up the slack by social um, media. Um, yeah. How has your uh, personal life been going? Are you have you suffered a anxiety or any other I mean no, issues during this year? No, or? no I'd say anxiety is a real thing, but for me, it's not it's not induced from it. I think I, as a freelancer, I live a pretty distant lifestyle, regardless as well. I'm a, I'm a social person, but meaning like I work, I you know, I work with my brother and I. So I'm as an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur can be a very isolated life at times too when you're mm -hmm. in your craft. So right. Um, you know, I think I was equipped to deal with this. The only thing is like, yeah, obviously your routine thrown off for certain things, you know, my routine at times like gyms clothes and certain social gatherings that meet up clothes, but it wasn't really bad, you know? Uh, I think the anxiety of just being cooped up is a very natural phenomenon I think a lot of people felt. For me, it was good. Maybe at like the last few, last month or so, it kind of started hitting me a little more, but I thought this was a really, was, was really necessary, the necessary retreat or respite, you know what I mean? Despite adversities, I think it was, I think the world kind of needed this in a, in, in, in a way. Now, I'm not saying the, I'm not saying the, the downsides and the deaths and all that, I, 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 by no means I mean that, but I mean, it's kind of forced us to like really, like I've been alluding to reset, and so I feel And uh, so, has anything good happened to you this year? Yeah. Uh, my family's healthy. My family's healthy. Uh, my business is still going. Um, and I'm a, really into cryptocurrency. I think that the need and the demand for cryptocurrency is taking off and it's showing its real utility. And, uh, and I think a lot of people, because of a situation where a lot of print, over printing, people are forced to find new ways to make money. Um, the stock market, especially cryptocurrency market, has really been a godsend for a lot of people and its application is, is really perfect for the time now of so much printing of money and the dollar being devalued that now people can can lock their money into a digital asset that's whole, a total new digital paradigm and own it and not be subjected to centralized parties so what i mean by that is people can take ownership of their health by choosing that they want a vaccine or a distance they can take ownership of their wealth by being able to put their money into a more sound uh, financial asset that's controlled by the people hence bitcoin um, and, um, and I think people have been forced to really ask themselves, hey, how, what is my place in this new world? I mean, we're, we're in a new world that is changing. And the conversation is like, what is my role in this new utopia or this new world? And that's, that's my last question. I mean, what is the future? Are we going to be masking up? Are we going to be vaccinating? Is this the new normal or uh, yeah, uh, uh, distancing and I mean, things like that? I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, I think the mask could probably be for about a year to change. Just, you have some people that hold it all longer. I think people probably be more vigilant if like, they feel sick masking, but I think at some point things have to return, will return. I think, I think um, bio hacking is something that was already gonna happen, but it's probably accelerated. Um, I think bio privacy is gonna become a new thing. Like what are the bioethics? But the reality is, you know, the, um, 
with fear you can you can with fear you can disseminate and create change and i think that with the vaccine deployment and this need of people since you have to take it in some way some form it's kind of giving a a way to what's the word where nothing is off guard it's innocent so there's it's it's a really it's a really thorny situation because in one regard, I, I took it and it's like, hey, have it, I, I don't mind taking it. But then in another regard, I realized there's a lot of like ethics and privacy, but it's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. And sometimes you just have to like trust, which is kind of, which is kind of, it was kind of tough to say to trust political parties or, or, or not political parties, but nations that have lied before. You know, if you ask the Indians, if you ask blacks, the Skiki experiments, if you ask different marginalized groups, you know, but, Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pack it up. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's, we've got to trust and live. You know. So. That was it. Yeah. Did Did you go through uh, this year with any personal philosophy? Any changes to your way of looking at life, life, life and death? Just to live. You know. What I mean, you gotta live. I, I realized the beauty of social interaction, of connecting with people, friends and family, and just you know, you gotta live. You know what I mean? At the end, you gotta live. You know, people will agree, people will disagree, but fuck it, you gotta live. Like it's just, it's, it is what it is, you know? So that, that, that's my philosophy, just live to the beat of your drum, live to the beat of your truth, and live to create, live to love, live to fuck up, live to give, just live, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, and, and, and live to, to live to create a bridge, you know? Like, you might anger people, you might do things that offend, you might do things inspire, but as long as you're, as long as you're able to create some bridge that others can traverse, then that, you know, you're doing you're doing something right. Thank you very much, David, on this Mother's Day 2021. <laughs> thank you very much. No, Rob, thank you. I appreciate it. Great questions, by the way. Important note, these interviews attempt to follow how Americans live their daily lives in a pandemic, their behavior, and personal belief systems. The views expressed are not those of journalist Michael Sean Comerford, nor any affiliated organizations, past or present. No interview should be considered an endorsement of the opinions expressed by the interviewee. These pandemic-focused interviews document a wide range of views held by individuals along Route 66 from February to May 2021.